Congratulations. All right, so this is our next hour of our meeting for tonight. This is the volunteer meeting for those of you guys who are just showing up and not knowing what's going on. Huh? Um, Speak up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, can't hear me. We'll turn on the PA system here in a second. So tonight we're just going to go over a couple quick little things for the, those that want to volunteer for this year's Nevada State Convention. Thanks for uh, coming out tonight. This is pretty good. We didn't have this much last year, so this is going to help out a lot. Yeah, this is our second year. So for those that are newbies at this, this is our second uh, state convention. Um, the history of this was, we used to have what's called MCOM West. That lasts for about roughly, what, eight years maybe? And then we had a couple years of um, where it went pretty much dormant because of lack of leadership, I would probably say, is one of the biggest things that happened to that event. Um, I ran that event in 2006 and kind of, no, 2005 and kind of 2006. So I kind of know what that event was doing and where we're going with that and such. So now we fast forward to the Nevada State Convention. And really the state convention is really meant for, really for ARIES teams to have a place to learn about different topics and subjects and get trained. So one of the, one of the tracks is geared towards the ARIES. And the other two tracks are just general interest. And this year we're looking at a lot of kind of newbie type stuff. From our surveys that we had last year from the State Convention of Virginia City, a lot of requests were for kind of newbie type of things or entry level type of topics. Because um, I think we had too many high level topics last year, which we did. A lot of um, SDR type topics really got in depth, things like that. So this year we kind of toned it down a little bit. We have some great presentations this year. Um, I'll just run through the schedule so you guys have an idea what's going to go on for the convention. Um, NVCon.org is where you're going to need to go to kind of you know keep an eye on what we're doing. The meeting we just had right before this was our planning meeting. So we've been talking about a lot of different things um, and some of the things will change on here uh, probably like tonight. But anyways, what the convention's going to start is on Friday. At 8 o'clock a.m., you guys are not meant to be here at that time, but at 8 o'clock a.m., the state county emergency managers will have their meeting here from 8 to 12 o'clock. And that's all the um, leadership from the county, so like Aaron Keniston for Washoe County, um, the state DEM director, which is uh, Chris Smith, which is also a ham, and then I'm not sure how many other EMs are hams. Are they all for the most part, or just those two? Quite a few. Well, uh... Kevin, oh, yeah, Kevin, Kevin's a ham. Um, there's quite a few. In fact, I hit Aaron up. I said, I need to start a database for the emergency operations center. Okay. So I know, and there's, there are firemen, there are policemen. And, okay. and one of the things we've done this last year, or last couple of years, is a lot of the emergency responder type agencies and staff have gone through a lot of our different ham classes. So a good chunk of them are ham radio operators as well, too, which is kind of a unique thing for us. But anyways, so from 8 a.m. to about 12, these guys are going to meet. This is just their normal meeting that they do every year. I think they do, what, do it twice a year, a big training type of thing, or just one? Right, it, yeah. it varies. And their topics are, you know, related to I think to he the, tries to do one at least a quarter. Yeah. So these guys talk about things at the county and state levels and, you know, whatever, whatever might be going on during that time. So at 1 o'clock, we're hoping that some of those guys will stick around and meet with the ARIES leadership for the afternoon. This was very popular last year, obviously, because that thing just got crammed. The <laughs> EM... about this size, I think. Yeah. The EM and ARIES leadership conference is really <coughs> meant for those guys to get together and talk about what's going on, to allow them to interface and kind of get together so that they know what's going on at the state level and they know what's going on with the ARIES groups and the amateur radio community. So really, it's, it's really meant for those guys to understand where we're all at. Even though a good chunk of them are ham operators, still, it's a nice interface for them. Um, Mike Corey, he's the ARIES coordinator? ARL. Yeah, he's the emergency manager for ARL. So every year when we're a sanctioned event like this, an ARR sanctioned event, that's why ARR is all over the place on our literature and such, they will commit a person, an ARL um, person, to come out to our convention. So when they sanction us, that gives a, an official coming from AWR up. This year we have Mike Corey. We had him last year. And the reason that we like having Mike Corey is because he's, he's more related to the income world, or I'm not sure he's calling it income anymore. And that's a whole other discussion. And you can learn all about, yeah, you can learn all about that when he comes out and talks in the afternoon. But the, the nice thing about having him come out every year is 
he's related to more of the emergency management, emergency communications world, which is really what we want to talk about for the most part with those guys. Um, and also we can use the heck out of him like we did last year. He was all over the place. So it's always great to have him. I mean, we could try to get the idiot of our president and things like that, but really at the end of the day, it's not worth our time, I think. We get more, we get, we get more, we get more information Less from him. Less politics, more, more uh, Correct. sustenance. Correct. Yeah. This is not a pomp and circumstance type of convention. This is actually, you know, getting down to people that are actually doing stuff and learning some things. <laughs> so anyways, from 1 to about 2.45 is the Aries EM Leadership Conference. We just call it a conference because it's all those guys getting together. Then, from 3 to 5 p.m. on Friday is just Skyworn training. So those of you guys that have been through Skyworn and want to learn more about Skyworn, this is a great presentation. It's also two hours long, which means he's going to go through a lot, a lot more stuff than he normally would in some of his other training. So this is a little bit more in depth. So if you want to learn about Skyworn, the spotter program, a great class to attend. The one that's going on at the same time is called Instructor School with Gordon West. If you guys know who Gordon West is, he's the guy, the goofy guy that's on books and you know, all over the place. And he's also on the uh, Ham Nation, and he's all over the place. So he's pretty well known. He's a popular ham, I guess, a famous ham. He'll be here for the afternoon to do what we call instructor school. For those that like to teach and help to teach, you know, in a classroom setting or other hams, this is a great class to go through. He kind of gives you tips and tricks in terms of keeping the audience engaged, things like that. I'm encouraging all of our SNARS um, education team to attend that just because I think we might learn some stuff. Um, and hopefully other um, clubs will you know, send some people there as well, too. Then we get into the barbecue Friday night. There's two dinners going on. There's kind of a, a side thing going on this year. We have a barbecue dinner for everybody else. And then the CW enthusiasts, there's a little group that's coming. They're going to have their own, and they're going to do their thing for the most part. When I talked to Sharon about the CW dinner, I think we did um, make the times a little bit different, which I think is a good thing if, I mean, we can talk to her again about that, but I think it's a good thing because some of the wives might be going to the barbecue and the husband might go to the CW, so they can kind of spend time together at the barbecue before they go to the 6 o'clock CW, if we change the time to that. Okay. Well, so far I haven't seen that in the registration, but we can talk about that okay. maybe. Anyways, so we have two things going on Friday. And then Saturday is when all the major stuff happens. So quickly in the morning, we're going to have a ham swap in the west parking lot. We're going to have MCOM vehicles, you know, uh, some other things going up at the same time. We might have the Army Mars special event station going out there too. I'm not sure yet. They have a field day going on that, that same weekend. Then we go into the open remarks, obviously registration. Do you mean uh, 10, 7, 7, 7 PP? What's that? You said field day. Did you mean the 7 PP? No, Army Mars has their own official field oh, day that weekend. There's a lot of things going on. There's the, there's the QSO party for the QRPs. I mean, there's a lot of things going on that weekend. Um, then we'll go into what's called opening remarks. This is kind of our opening session. We're going to have Bob Value, our Pacific Division Director, John Bigley, which is our Section Manager, Chris Smith, which is the Director of Department of Emergency Management for the state, and then we're also going to have um, Mike Corey from AWRL as well there just kind of open up the event. He just doesn't know it yet. Yes. Like I said, last year we put him everywhere, so he's, he's going to do the exact same thing. I standing off last Yes. Year. If they send us someone, back. we're going to work him off. He said he's coming back. Our biggest topic for this year is kind of like our keynote speaker is going to be all about DMR. And the reason that this has become kind of center stage is A, we're doing it in this area and there's a lot of interest. Two, as we were getting people scheduled onto the schedule, all, almost all the speakers were saying, I'm going to go to this DMR thing, don't put me at the same time. So that basically said, okay, we're there, there we go. <laughs> yes. So I said, the heck with that, we're just going to do an opening thing, we'll have DMR as the biggest session, and then they'll break out and do their thing. So that's where that came about. Mark Ward is planned to come and talk. He's the same guy that came to the Snars Breakfast, along with a couple other people. So he'll talk about DMR in general, kind of talk about what's going on. We might have a kind of a little forum-ish type thing going on at the same time with maybe a few of us to talk about what's going on in this area and our plans. And then we'll have a lot of different breaks throughout the day, and the breaks allows people to go into the exhibit hall, which we'll talk about. The, and then from here, you guys can go look on, on the website for all the different things that we're doing. Sunday, what's up? Yeah, yeah. yeah and then we have the banquet, obviously. We have a special guest called Professor Spark Gap. All I'm going to say. There's a lot going on with that that night, so those that are doing, going to the banquet are going to be for a treat. 
just like we did last year with our Mark Twain impersonator, which was pretty popular. We have some new one this year. It'll be interesting. We'll see how it goes. And then we finish up um, Sunday with a forum. And that basically includes all these guys from the EWR, our Nevada section manager, Mike Corey, and then the you know, Pacific Division. And this is kind of a, a feature of all EWR sanctioned events. There's always an EWR forum at the end or beginning, somewhere throughout the program. And then, of course, our grand prize, which our grand prize this year is a KX3 fully loaded. So I don't know if you guys have seen that little thing. It's an SDR radio. It's a great radio. A few of us have those. Um, it's only 12 watts max. But from a QRP, from a portability standpoint, it's a great radio. I've done tons with mine already that I have. What are the hours on Saturday and Sunday at the Exeter Hall? Yeah. What's that? Is Sunday the Exeter Hall going to be open? They're going to probably be here until about 10-ish, 11-ish. The reason I say is, uh, it feels to me like there's something missing. Like if people are going to drive and be here for an hour and a half, it seems like a really skinny day to get people here. I'm just wondering. Sundays have historically been a day that people travel out of here. So those that are staying here will, you know, do their thing and get back out. It's so it's only a couple. What I'm seeing is really about less than two hours. Correct. Sundays are always like that because most people want to get back out of here. Vendors included. Vendors, everything. Yeah. Sundays historically, what I'm starting to see with conventions across the country are doing the exact same thing and or cutting out Sunday completely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So. The reason we put them here on the schedule like it is to hopefully keep people here, come back and you know, interact with the uh, section leaders or the you know, leadership, and then have the grand prize drawing at the very end. How many items will you not have to be <coughs> present to win? One? One rate. Okay. okay. So there's a couple things with the registration this year. There's a pre-registration raffle for those that registered ahead of time will be thrown into a special raffle. And we're hoping it's going to be one of the TYT dual band radios that we're getting sponsored by Connect Systems, who brought us our CS700. Since we spent a lot of money with them, they may, they may give us some. So hopefully that will be the radio for the raffle. Um, like I said, the KX3 is the grand prize, and then we're going to have a bunch of different things. We just kind of will have some FT60Rs, the PowerPole Anderson connectors, some clocks. I mean, there's a lot of things we have in the raffle this year. All right, so that's the schedule. Any questions about the schedule? Do you have a handout? We will. No, the, the, the schedule is kind of in flux until almost until the day of the event. That's why I don't hand out anything for this because it can change in, you know, last minute. We did that last year. So registration we will be handing out. Okay. Correct. So we'll have a nice little map and schedule like we did last year when you walked up in the morning or Friday night. Uh, you might want to expand for everybody what the Friday night barbecue is. Um, you got a bus ride, I'm going to call it a hay ride. But <laughs> yeah, and then you guys can drive down, it doesn't really matter to walk down, but at the north end of the property down here, there's a little orchard that where we're going to have our barbecue uh, for Friday night. It's a nice little area, it's an old ranch house. Um, depending on weather, obviously, that's where we're scheduled to be. If weather is not a great thing, we're going to be back here somewhere. Well, and Sharon's yeah. providing a shuttle for us. And we'll have a bus that goes back and forth, so that way you don't have to walk down. I don't think they have entertainment right now, oh. so I'm not sure about that yet. Like I said, the schedule's in flux, so I'm not sure at the moment. <laughs> I thought, uh, I thought Dan said something about Dan or talked about entertainment. That's Saturday. Okay. Okay. Shuttle bus will be available also, not only from the orchard, but from the KOA, from the water. It's, again, it's not a long walk out. It's uphill coming this way, and for the folks that don't walk, um, that shuttle bus will, will be available. We will coordinate with Sharon and find out exactly how she wants that done, whether you call direct or they might just be out there. however they want to work it out. They, they have their there are drivers that sit right over here at the entryway with the bus, and so they just they know they're going to be running around. Uh, just also for your information, all the um, most of the chairpersons will be uh, communicating on a DMR radio. So if you don't have a DMR radio, you have time to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to buy one. <laughs> but on a serious side. Um, we are half a dozen of us, whatever they are, uh, whatever, however many there are, we're going to be using DMR radios to communicate with. And that's just for emergency purposes, or I need to talk to you about this or that. 
I don't know how many of you know Arlen, because Arlen never comes to meetings and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of those guys that works Work. for a living, but he yes. does it in the dark. <laughs> and uh, Arlen is, the, uh, is our head of security, and he will be responsible for making sure that everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. And of course, the casino, Boomtown, has its own security, and they'll be around. So. So let's go really quickly over the layout so you guys have an idea of what's going on. Um, so this room right here will be the staff area slash exhibitor kind of break room area. You're, so, you're right there. Why so you, you guys came to the pinion room. This is where we're at right here. So that we have conference rooms across, across the way. We have conference room next door. And then this foyer area is where we're going to have some other activity as well too. <coughs> Um, I haven't assigned the rooms yet to the actual session, so as we get closer, that will be kind of filled in and we'll be figuring that out. Depending on how many people show up, this, this, these areas might be combined as one in the morning to allow that DMR presentation to go. And then once it's done, we'll close them off and then they break out into rooms again. This is the room that we're going to have the, um, the all-day class, the one-day class. Um, this room right here and these tables for the most part are like little break areas for just the general attendees. So that way, if they need to sit down and you know just kind of uh, relax a little bit, we also will use those for people to fill out the raffle tickets and such, which we do have some here if you guys want to sell them. Um, once again, we're doing the KX3. So this area will be open during the day. In the afternoon, that might be closed off for the Nevada section meeting. There's usually some sort of eight of our Nevada section meeting to get the leadership together and talk about some of the issues throughout the state. Those are generally not open to the public, so that room might be closed off at that time. The exhibit hall is what we're calling it this year, which is right next to it. The main entrance for it will be back here. So if you went down this hallway right here, you'd see the doors into this area. Right now, these are the vendors. We actually have one more I need to put onto the map. And hopefully, we'll have a couple more showing up. So we should have a field, you know, a nice full uh, vendor area this year. I'm not sure who High Tech with the liquidators is, but they're kind of like the wired communication guys, where they have these connectors, adapters, coax, things like that. I think that's great because I think that's the biggest thing that we're all lacking in this area is having a place to provide connectors and basic common things that we need. So that's going to be a time for you guys to stock up. And it's usually pretty cheap compared to some of the other yeah. stuff, especially radio shop, if they even have it for once. Yeah. We do have Delacraft coming this year again. These guys have been great. Um, if you want to play with the KX3 before you win it, perfect place to do it. It's doing the whole entire operation of it. Can you get by What's that? You didn't get the memo? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, and here we go again. So, yes, a lot more room. So that'll be a great place to experiment with the KX3s if you haven't operated one of those. They're a great radio. Trust me, I have one. Someone else has them in here as well, too. Um, Disaster Guys, Antenna Guy, and so on and so forth. We have a new thing called Amateur Radio Club. I'm not sure about who they are. Um, and then we have NB7X, it's another guy that has a bunch of parts and things like this that. This guy. So, so we're going to have a lot of opportunities for you guys to buy stuff. Benton is great. I bought some other stuff. Would you say the raffle table will be out? Yeah. Yeah, so the raffle table will be out in front. So we'll have a registration pretty much like right out here, raffle table, special event station, and CW station. With the CW um, QSO party going on that same weekend, we're setting up the station here to operate. So they'll be operating right there. We'll have our own special event station called N7B, which we need people to have out with that. And I think that's it for the layout of the facility. Um, I think I said we're going to have a swap meet out in the west parking lot. Um, I think what else I have for you guys on that. Um, I'll pass this around, you guys can see it. So one of the things that comes with the registration package this year is a nice little lanyard, which we didn't have last year and a commemorative little pin that everybody will get that has our logo and the year. So we're kind of starting to, you know, start a little tradition. So you can take a look at that. That's what you'll get in the registration <coughs> package. You guys will all get one as well, too. I've got a volunteer that's not here that's going to be helping me with the FAST class. Okay. Uh, should I give his information to Judy so she no. knows who he is? He's actually collecting everything. Yeah, either one of us, whoever you find next. <laughs> um, I just need to know quickly because we're going to be... looking. Yeah. So those of you guys that did order the, we'll talk about the shirts real quickly then. Those that did order the shirts, I just need that. If you want a shirt, I just need to know that information. The shirts are just going to be a basic navy blue polo. Um, there's men's size and women's size. So if you guys notice that, make sure you select the right types. Um, the shirts will basically be the SNARS logo, and they'll be 
like I said, a dark blue. That way people know who's, you know, who's the staff this year. Um, I think we had a little problems last year with people knowing who were staff and who weren't, because we all had different colors. Um, I'm going to probably send out an email eventually to the regular membership to tell them to wear their purple. So I want to make sure that we are represented pretty well. So the purple is just the regular members, the blues is the staff this year that are volunteering. We'll hopefully do that. The day that you'll want to wear your shirts is really going to be Saturday, because most of you guys are going to be doing stuff on Saturday. If you want to wash it real quickly, or hopefully you didn't spill anything on it for Sunday, you can wear it as well too. Yeah, but Saturday is the main day that we want everybody to wear the shirts. Um, so the registration form, you guys all have one, correct? Did everybody sign the attendance law? No, okay. Okay. So everybody has a sheet. So that sheet basically allows you guys to fill out some basic information so that way we have it. And we're going to go into really quickly of where people want to volunteer. So this might be hard to see on this right here. Let me see if I can blow it up even more. Yeah. What's that? Oh, you had your lined up. We can put it on there. Presentation. Yeah. How many do you need to help out with that? Yeah, I was thinking for presentations. Is it? I need like one extra person. One or two. Yeah, it's it's uh, what we're going to do for presentations is uh, in each of the rooms initially uh, we probably want two people we can we can split it up but for the there's four different rooms going on we want to make sure all the projectors are working for the people it's no great knowledge we might some of the people coming might not know how to hook up their computer into the back it's just a cable you know we have we have some cables that are supposed to bring the fancy one themselves Mike so it's just making sure everything works. And you know, we'll, we'll be walking around for the presentations and the various things to see and all that, so we need about four people. What was that about people have to bring their own cable? No, that some of the, the, the people uh, that are going to present yeah. will, are required to bring their own HDMI cable. Nobody has told me about it for my speakers. That's why I'm asking. Well, we just got we told we're going to provide, provide everything, so that's why I wanted to find out. We'll have some they people bring some the cable. Most people that are coming to speak with it will probably have or we'll have put their own laptop. We'll oh, Who's doing the laptop? Okay, we'll put, okay, guys, guys, guys. We're going to supply the HDMI cables. We have plenty of those. We have VGA and HDMI cables. So don't worry about them bringing their stuff. The only thing that we were telling speakers to do is if they want internet connection, they better have a backup plan. Because the problem that you're running into casinos is. When the Wi-Fi is free, you're going to have a bunch of people on it. So there's not going to be a guaranteed bandwidth. So if anybody's looking to have a dedicated Wi-Fi here, you know, do at your own risk, make sure you have a backup plan. And a lot of the ports are blocked. So if you have some special thing like IRLP, you want to do Echo yeah, you, you want to do D-Star, you cannot do it with the Wi-Fi, at least the one that's in this room. Will it have a hardware port available? Yeah, that that big I don't think they have them in the rooms. They're just white boxes. But that's logistical stuff. We'll get to that later. So anyway, so tonight what I want to try to do is fill out the schedule as much as possible to see what you guys want to do. Even though you guys filled out the form that helps. But I just wanted to see if there's preferences in terms of what people wanted to do. So I guess we can just kind of go around the room and see what you guys are looking to do. Judy, I'm not sure what you have figured out. I have enough for a registration. I have myself and um, Nancy's very familiar with it too, so we have two very experienced people. And then we have one, two, three, four, maybe five. Yeah, I'm okay with registration. Um, Christine, right here, um, Christine Coyier is willing to help in other areas besides registration. So I'm kind of letting her do raffle help. Radio illiterate. That's fine. We'll, we'll teach you. Yeah, we'll can you count work. money? Can you I can count money? Can and I can sell. Don't worry, we'll camouflage it. So really quickly, how the schedule is going to work this year is we're asking for two-hour shifts. And then if you can, serve at least two different shifts. It could be back-to-back, -back, it could be split up, I don't really care. Um, but at least that way we have enough people to kind of work the areas and not get burnt out for the day. Especially those that want to go to the presentation and things like that. For you guys signing up and, and paying whatever you guys are paying, depending on what you're selecting, 
that gets you into the you know into the convention. So that way you don't have to worry about that piece. Plus it gets you the shirt if you guys are looking for that. Like I said, the shirts we're thinking are they're gonna be the Snars logo. It might be one or two colors, I'm not sure. We're still working that out in terms of how many we get tonight. And I'm hopefully going to order them either this week, later this week, because she needs a couple weeks probably to deal with them uh, through the vendor we're going through. So before we get into this, any questions you guys have? About the convention, about what's going on. Are you going to go over categories of all, where we're volunteering? Or yeah. Position? Yeah, that's what we're going to go through right now. So no questions? Okay. So let's start off. So registration sounds like you're okay, so you don't need anybody yet, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, raffles. Do you have enough people? I've got Kevin and Amber, right? Thank you, Steve. Okay, we can fill in Christine. All right, so we'll just go through the, the categories really quickly. So the raffle table is going to be sitting out here. We're going to have two raffle tables. One's going to be here, which is for the whole entire event for the most part, and we're trying to do one at the ham swap as well, too, just to kind of double exposure. So that's what we're looking for to help out. So how many of you guys are willing to help out a shift or two with raffle? You guys? You guys? Okay. And you guys mark that on your sheets, right? Okay. But it doesn't matter. So what we're going to do really quickly is let's go ahead and fill out the outside. So really, all we're going to need for the outside is maybe two shifts. All right. So who who wants to play at? Oh, wait, that's the right one. Yeah, that it's is. The raffle ticket outside. All right. Who wants to play at 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be roughly about 6 a.m. What 